Hi folks! Today I wanted to do a video talking about the difference between group, make compound path or release compound path and weld. I often see these three things confused in the Facebook groups that I'm a part of. Uh, people don't know when to make or release the compound path, they're not sure when to weld and they're not sure why when they do them in the wrong order they end up with um, losing cut lines. So I've got these are sort of the outcomes of the three tools. So what I'm going to do is I've created three of these circles. So what we have here is a circle that's filled in on top of another circle. So there's a couple of things you can do when you've got overlapping shapes. The first thing you could do is right click and click group. This means that like it says, you've grouped your two objects together. So you've got your bigger circle and then stacked on top of that is a smaller circle. It doesn't make them one shape. It just groups them together into one object. This is also reversible. So you can ungroup and group as you like. You can also have groups of groups. So this is a circle grouped with another circle. I could select these and group them together. So that means when you go to ungroup, it will again ungroup in layers. So the first ungroup will be to separate the two objects. And then if I ungroup these ones, I'm back to two single shapes. So group and ungroup is really handy for your designing, um, but it doesn't really affect how anything cuts and um, it's reversible. So it's really good for like organizing things on your page, making sure your layout is correct, moving parts of designs that you've already finalized. Uh, the next one is make and release compound path. So again, this is reversible. So you can right click on your two objects and click make compound path. As soon as you do this, you'll notice that the fill changes. So this basically cuts out the, the small top circle from the big bottom circle and makes a donut shape. So now when you fill this in, you've got a donut rather than a filled in circle on top of another filled in circle. This is also reversible. So you can then release compound path. So anytime you've got like a letter, say like an O or an A, that has a circle in the middle, you can release compound path and make compound path to create one shape. So this is now no longer two objects. You'll notice that when you right click, you can't group or ungroup. This is one single shape. It's a donut shape. The next thing you can do is weld. So weld will um, merge together any overlapping shapes. So in this case, we've got a small circle and it's overlapping a large circle. So we're going to right click and we're going to click weld. And this will make the top circle, you'll notice it disappears. That's because the small circle was completely enclosed by the large circle. And so it got welded. This is unreversible. So there's no unweld button. That inside line has become part of the shape below it and it's unable to be brought back out. So you can, of course, use the undo tool for any of these steps, but if you're too far down the line, you won't be able to reverse it. Um, you can also, if it's not entirely overlapping, if the two shapes only overlap by a small amount when you weld, only the overlapping portions of that shape will join together. You can also then weld a compound path. So if we right click and we weld that together, you've now welded those two circles together and you could then release the compound path to get your little circle back out. So again, this is just about merging and unmerging shapes, um, depending on what the outcome is you're looking for. So often these tools are used in terms of text. So I'm going to move these out of the way and I'm going to bring some text onto the screen. So I've just written out the word happy using the text tool in um, Silhouette Studio. So this is a script font. And what you'll notice is that there's some letters that overlap. The A overlaps with the P, the P overlaps with the second P, and the P kind of just touches the Y. So there's a few things that you want to do with this before it's ready to cut. The H currently will cut exactly as it is. You don't need to do anything with that to make it cut correctly. The A, on the other hand, overlaps with the P. So if the silhouette machine cut all the way along the A, it would then cut into the P and you would end up with this little section which would have cut lines through it and you would accidentally weed it away and it would be um, a bit of negative space that you don't want. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of that space. We also have a Y that's not quite overlapping and you might actually want that to overlap so that it looks a little bit more flowy. So there's a few things we can do. Everything you do from this point on will make it so the text isn't editable. So at the moment, if I double click the text, I could add an exclamation mark, I could add on birthday, I could keep typing, I could 
write whatever I want. Every step after this will make it so that that's no longer possible. You're converting your text from a text object into a shape object. So you can do plenty of things with it. You just can't write more text. So the first thing we can do is we can right click and we can ungroup it. And what this does is creates individual letters that we can move around. So one of the things we might want to do is we might want to move our Y over just a little bit so that when we weld together, this P joins with the Y. The next thing we might want to do is we might want to fill it in just so we can see what we're doing. And you might think now that these aren't going to overlap, but because this cut line is actually still there, if you bring it to the front, you'll see where's it gone? Bring it to the front, you'll see that it actually still overlaps. So just filling it in with color doesn't fix our problem. So we've tried filling it in with color and that didn't work to remove these overlapping sections. So the next thing, or the first thing you actually want to do is when you've got your word typed out and you've got all the letters exactly where you want them to be by ungrouping them, you want to select your word, right click and click weld. This means that as you can see, nothing changed on the H, but the A, P, P and Y have now welded together. So anywhere that overlapped, um, has now joined together. And the key there is that the shapes are overlapping. So because we didn't release the compound path, this part of the A, the inside portion, is not overlapping the larger portion of the A. It's actually one shape because it's a compound path. So it didn't disappear. Only the bits that overlapped between the letters disappeared. You could then from there, if you wanted to release the compound path, you could, and that would mean that you could play around with these uh, individual portions of the letter. Um, and then you could make a compound path again. If you didn't want to do that, if you didn't need to play around with the inside of the letters at all, once you've welded it together, oops, once you have welded your, sh your letters together, you might notice that the H is not connected because no part of the H was overlapping the A. So these are now two separate objects. So we might want to select them both and group them together. And now we can move them around the canvas as one object, which is pretty handy. So I'm just going to go back to when we had just text before we'd done anything to it, before we'd ungrouped it, before we'd moved any of our letters, when we have still text happening. So I'm going to go through what often people do and why it messes up your lettering. So often people will say the first thing you do is release compound path, or maybe they just accidentally do it, or they're not quite sure in what order to do it. So if you release the compound path first and you ungroup it, you can move your letters around individually. Um, but then what happens when you go to weld now that you've released the compound path, if you then click weld, your inside of your letters ends up disappearing because I'm going to go back a step fill these in with color because once you release the compound path this becomes not a donut but a shape on top of another shape so we've got this teardrop shape on top of the y shape so just like with our circles before if you weld them the inside will disappear so not only will the overlapping sections between the a and the p disappear but also the inside of your letters will disappear so if you accidentally release compound path and you're like oh no i just want to make sure the between my letters overlap at welds, but not the inside of the letters, you can still fix it. You just have to make each letter back into a compound path. So you make compound path, make it a compound path, make it a compound path, and make compound path. And now when you weld them together, your shapes will uh, weld where they're supposed to between the A and the P, P and the P, and the P and the Y. You could then, the same as before, group this together. And then when you go to cut, you've still got cut lines everywhere you need, but you won't get any cutting between the letters. So I'm just going to start with a new word. This time we're going to use a lowercase case H, just so you can see the whole world word overlap. So we've got this word. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to ungroup it because we want to move our Y over. And note that ungrouping it releases these five shapes from their group, but they are still five individual shapes. 
and not um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, not the ten shapes you would get if you release the compound path. So the first thing we did is ungroup. We moved our Y over a little. Maybe you want to put the P up a little bit because we want this lettering to sort of look a bit more bouncy. So you can play with your letters now. Then you're going to select everything, right click and click weld. And now your letters are all joined together. You could fill them in with color and you could send that to cut vinyl from your, uh, you could send vinyl to cut on your machine and it would cut out all correctly in one shape. So I hope that's been helpful. I hope that's sort of cleared up some of the differences between group, weld and make compound path and the order you want to do things, especially when you're working with text. Um, I hope that helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments down below and I can always do a follow up video if something's not quite clear. Um, hope you all have a wonderful day and happy crafting. Bye.